Hey, and good afternoon. This is Angela Brown, and I'm here today with James Copeland, and I am super excited about today's show because we've got so many interesting things happening today. James is the Director of Technical Services at Prism Specialties, and he's going to help us unpack appliances and how to keep them clean and how to make sure that they're in working order. Now, this is a really, really interesting niche. And I cannot tell you how excited I am today to hear from a specialist about appliances because I get a lot of questions and we do it the best we can as cleaners, but from somebody who has the technical know-how, that's a whole different ballgame. So please help me welcome James Copeland. Yay. I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I got a question when you talk about fingerprints and appliances Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. It sounds like you're in the kitchen right now. If that's the case, lots of us have stainless steel appliances and we touch the handles of the dishwasher, the microwave, and there are all these fingerprints that even when you wipe them off, the fingerprints are still there. And so how do you get those off? A mild dish soap can work. If that doesn't work, vinegar is a good route to go. But keep in mind that vinegar is an acidic acid and it's on the pH scale, I say two to three, about 2.5 is where that is. And it depends on the type of vinegar you're using. It can be good at removing mineral stains. And that's oftentimes what we see. We're going to handle the water. If we have hard water in our hands or we just touch the cleaner and then we go and touch the handle as we're throwing dishes in and moving things, that might leave some residue, maybe some fats, maybe some proteins. I would suggest going with, if the warm water and the microfiber don't work, the next step would be mild dish soap, okay? And if that don't work, then I would look at the product manual and start to look at what recommendations they say for all-purpose cleaners and stainless steel cleaners. So it depends on what substrate you're talking about of what type of cleaner and method that you want to use. So some manufacturers, I think Whirlpool will suggest a lot of, of fresh products. And a fresh has a full line. Uh, Barkeepers has a full line of cleaners. So if your manufacturer don't recommend something, I would really recommend on using, translate it to something that's like kind and quality to what you have, to what that appliance is. And whatever that appliance is, and if they're making a recommendation and they're saying, use Cascade inside my dishwasher then I would use something that has similar chemicals that are in that cleaner. And you can find the safety data sheet online between all of them. It'll share the pH of them. It'll share the different chemicals that are in it. So if a manufacturer says, don't use ammonia, don't use ammonia, it'll discolor long-term. As a matter of fact, (laughs) Sub-Zero will tell you, Sub-Zero has a better quality stainless steel. And if you use ammonia on it, you got to rinse it right away. Otherwise, you'll get a hazing effect. Whereas like my LG appliances, I would never use ammonia on it. It's a thicker, different type of stainless steel. It has more of a sheen, a finish to it. And I don't want to cause hazing. It may happen too quick for me to be able to rinse it off and not have that a side effect from that particular cleaner. So I always work my way up. And if I was like, oh, I can't get rid of it. I would go to the manual and look at the manual and see what they recommend. So that way I know what type of all-purpose cleaner to use, what type of stainless steel cleaner to use. You made a really good point about checking the owner's manual. So I'm going to call that tip number four, check the owner's manual. Yes. And I completely agree with this because there are a lot of appliances that even though they look like stainless steel, maybe they have a finish that is like a stainless steel finish, but maybe it has like a blue tint to it, a slightly blue tint, or maybe it's like a film that was wrapped over the top of it. And maybe it's not an honest stainless steel. And so oddly enough, and we've discovered this in cleaning, where sometimes we'll go into a customer's house and we assume that it's honest to goodness through and through stainless steel, and it's not. It's got a finish on it. And then if you use a strong chemical on it, like James said, sometimes it can discolor, and then you're left wondering, oh no, how do I fix that? And so Exactly. (laughs) Knowing what you're dealing with is awesome. So I love this, and I'm going to call tip number four, reading the owner's manual. Now, James said something that he sneaked in there, and I want to unpack it really quickly for those of you that just think, oh, I can just clean any kind of appliance I want and just kind of experiment as I go. He talked about the safety data sheets, and I'm a huge fan of reading the safety data sheets, which every single manufacturer that creates chemicals is required by law to provide. And so you can just do a Google search for whatever the cleaning chemical is. And James mentioned Barkeeper's Friend. It's one of my favorite products for stainless steel. 
And it's because it's been around for 138 years and it was designed for stainless steel. And so when we have like the water drops that drip down from where you put your cup in and the water drips down on the fridge or the water drips down like from your hands on the fronts of the dishwasher and you've got those streaks that seem like they'll never come out. If you'll take some barkeeper's friend in your hand and you'll just spray your hand with a spray bottle or you'll just add a couple drops of water so it's damp and you'll take just a damp cloth and wrap your finger in it and tap it so that there's not a lot of barkeeper's friend, not a lot but you'll go over those areas with the grain of the stainless steel. It will remove those really icky, sticky mineral deposits that are like etched in to the stainless steel. And then you can just buff it off, wipe it off with a clean damp cloth and then buff it off and it's good to go. I mean, it looks great. Be really careful and read the safety data sheets if you're not sure. So I'm going to say safety data sheets is number five. So we're rocking and rolling here. Thank you, James. Our time is up and I knew this would happen. I have learned so much. This has been so incredibly helpful. James, please tell our listeners where they can go to find you, learn more about you. Absolutely. So my email, I'm always monitoring that. It's james.copeland at prismspecialties.com. Feel free to email me. As I said, I'm constantly uh, monitoring it. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions you have. I'm happy to help the masses. Well, thank you so much. And also, I'm going to leave links in the notes below to James' website, as well as his email address. I really appreciate you guys joining us. And James, I appreciate your time and attention today. You have been immensely helpful as we move through the new year to take care of the appliances that we've invested so much in. Thank you very much for today. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you and Happy New Year to all of you as well.